Marine Ramo. I am a paleo-oceanographer slash marine geologist who studies the history and causes of climate change in the Earth's past. My colleagues and I are the ones who proposed the uplift weathering hypothesis. The uplift weathering hypothesis is when active tectonic uplift produces several tectonic and climatic effects that cause strong weathering of freshly fragmented rock. This process removes CO2 from the atmosphere and cools global climate. Tectonic processes that cause uplift. There are two main tectonic processes that cause uplift. The first one is subduction. Subduction occurs when a dense oceanic plate subducts under a less dense continental plate. When the oceanic plate subducts, it melts due to heating of the mantle, and this causes increased volcanism, which causes a rise and uplift of mountains like you see in the Andes in South America. The second tectonic process that causes uplift is continent-continent collision. This can be observed as India collided with Asia to create the Tibetan, the Tibetan Plateau. <laughs> uplift creates steep slopes which create more mass wasting. Um, the increased elevation also leads to mountain glaciers and orographic precipitation. All of this increases the rate at which the rocks are being fragmented. Fragmentation of freshly exposed bedrock can occur by two processes. One being physical, also known as mechanical, and two, chemical. Physical weathering are when rocks are broken into smaller pieces by physical mean. Physical, which I'll demonstrate here by pulverizing this small rock. This process can happen due to mass wasting, glaciation, and fractures and folding of the earth. Mmm, pulverization. Great. One. The process of physical weathering increases the surface area of rocks. This fragmentation of freshly exposed bedrock by physical weathering processes such as rockfall, hydrofracturing, glacial grinding of rocks, and fractures formed from earthquakes creates more surface area without losing mass. This allows more surfaces for a chemical weathering process to act upon shown by these three figures. Also, the example of frost wedging or hydro fracturing shows how water can get into the cracks and the pores of certain rocks, freezing and then slowly causing them to break apart. Chemical weathering is when they're altered in a way through, by chemical reactions while water is present like hydrolysis. The second form of weathering which will take these pulverized particles such as these, much like this halide I have here, dissolves in water which is much like a hydro hydrolysis. There are two kinds of chemical weathering, hydrolysis and dissolution. Hydrolysis consists of CO2 from the atmosphere and rain from the atmosphere. This forms carbonic acid typically in groundwater. This groundwater can react with silicate rocks and here's carbonic acid and then this forms ions that run off in streams and rivers into the ocean to create CaCO3, SiO2, and H2O. This removes CO2 from the atmosphere. Dissolution is really the same as hydrolysis. It takes CO2 from the atmosphere and rain and creates carbonic acid, except dissolution reacts with limestones. Limestones then run off into the ocean and create CaCO3, similar to hydrolysis, but there is no long-term storage of CO2, which goes back into the atmosphere, and you also get H2O. The Wind River Mountains in Wyoming provide evidence for the uplift weathering hypothesis. This area has been glaciated repeatedly over the last several thousand years, and in studying their moraines, a rapid decrease in the average rate of weathering can be observed. The fresh ground bedrock created by uplift provides more available material for chemical weathering and carbon sequestering. 
In conclusion, today we learned that the uplift weathering hypothesis will increase weathering and increase CO2 removal, which in turn leads to global cooling. Thank you all for joining me and my colleagues today.